Hi, good morning Springfield marketing students. This is your teacher, Mr. Brown, and today what we're going to do is run through a quick tutorial of what we discussed last week, and that is how to create a resume with tables. This way you've got something that you can access at home, um, and for other classes, etc. So, what I've gone ahead and done is created a list of objectives for what we're doing in this video. Um, first, the rationale for tables. As I have explained, uh, tables, while they're not necessarily as quick to set up initially, give us a lot of ability to uh, reformat later on, to move things around, to make changes on the fly without uh, you know, having to sit down for an excessive amount of time. So it's basically, if you spend a little time up front, um, it'll save you more time in the long run because a resume is a living document. It changes, literally, it can change month to month. So, and you want to keep on top of it. Um, what we're going to do is show you how to set up a simple table in Microsoft Word. And once you understand the basics of this simple table, you'll see the power and how it can be applied to other things as you go through. And once you hit college, uh, believe me, they aren't going to sit and explain how to do this. You're going to be expected to know how to do all of this. Um, I'm also going to go over ordered and unordered lists in Word. I've noticed a number of people using dashes or numbers and then ignoring the prompt to switch to an ordered and unordered list. An ordered and unordered list are simply those bullet points that we talk about in class. I'm also going to show you how to, to use the tab key, far more efficient than hitting the uh, space key. Um, and then uh, just as an aside, you're going to learn how to show and hide formatting symbols in a Word document. This helps you get rid of uh, extra spaces. Um, if something isn't quite aligning properly, it can show you what it's doing there. So let's move on. First things first, and let me get rid of this going to go up to design, or excuse me, layout, and delete table. And then we're going to start over again. So to create a table, start with a new document. You either open a new document or hit control N. And the first thing you're going to do, and mind you, this is uh, Word 2010. Your tab will look slightly different than mine. Go up to table, click the down arrow. And as you scroll over this, notice it gives you a preview down below. We want a one by one table. And I've noticed if I go to the home key, no, it wasn't set. Okay. So we go back to home and we have just this one by one table. And right now, what I need you to do is go ahead and put in your name, type it in. And for whatever reason, my computer is showing a lot of lag right now. We'll figure that out later. And then instead of hitting Enter, if I hit Enter, notice it gives me another space beneath. I don't want that. I want this tiny little cell up there. I want to hit Tab. Tab will actually add a cell at the very bottom. Adding cells in the middle is slightly different. And we'll get to that. Now that I'm down here, I want to go back up to my top cell. I want to highlight it. Now at this point, if you don't have your textbook open, and that would be Marketing Dynamics by Clark, we're on page 641. You will notice that the name at the top is bolded and in all caps. There's an easy way to do this. Once you've typed in your name, go back, and if you noticed, I was right here under Font. Let's click Cancel, go through that. On the Home tab, under Font, there's this little expander button in the corner. Click that and notice the dialog here. I can do small caps, I can do all caps. In this case, I want to do all caps. I want to do it in a bold font and I want to do it in 12 point type. And it gives you a preview below and I click OK. Now when I go to the next one, now here is where I'm going to put in, and this is per the layout on page 641, my address, 1111, Happy Street, etc., blah, blah, blah. 
Rather than go through all of that, now that you know how to do the table, you actually know how to do the entire resume. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that window. And I've gone ahead and I've filled this in. And by the way, if you notice on this one, I'm actually using Cambria. Stick to a font that is on everybody's computer. If you don't, weird things will happen. If you email a resume um, as a Word document as opposed to a PDF uh, or an Adobe Acrobat document. So I've gone ahead and I've filled this out. And I put in all of this, and if you notice, if you uh, read it, you will realize that this resume um, stops about four years ago. And because this was my last commercial resume, my current resume has a layout specific for teachers. So you're going to have to do several things here. One, let's back up because I go to the design tab. I want to turn on all of my borders. This is what you should have at this point. This black line around here and stuff that you're not going to want. And I've noticed I also have my paragraph key turned on. This is the show hide. This shows all of the hidden formatting symbols. So I'm going to turn that off for the time being because really what I want to look at is how this is going to look once it's printed out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click in the table anywhere. Careful. There we go. For some reason, my little crossed arrows aren't showing up there, but it's still working. Um, it's giving me, it's highlighting everything. That's what I want. Now I'm going to go to design. Now back to the borders, and I click no border. Now let's take a look at this to prove, and oh, by the way, if your grid lines aren't showing, go to the layout tab and you want to click view grid lines because if that's unchecked it'll look like you have nothing there you definitely want to see those grid lines they will not show on a printed document and to prove it to ourselves let's go to file print and notice everything's gone however I'm seeing some other stuff I've got some orphans here they're spilling over onto a second page um, I don't really care for how close the word education is and experience and objective so we're gonna work on that just a little bit but what I do like and where I differ where things differ from the book is I do like the indent and also if you notice these indents do not match so we're gonna have to take care of that so I'm gonna pause the video get back and we'll take a look at that in just a moment Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is take care of this minor formatting flaw um, where, the, where the bullet points are not lining up or this unordered list. So I go into the corner of this cell where it turns into this little arrow and I click and it highlights everything in that cell for me. And then I go up top here under paragraph and increase indent. Once, twice, boom, everything's lined up. That's exactly what I wanted. Now it's also telling me there's a with the blue squiggly that there's something wrong with bachelors. I've left out that apostrophe. So we're going to put that in there to make sure that everything is appropriate. Now notice I've still got these orphans down here, but I also mentioned that I wanted to put more space between the word experience and the actual dates. So how do I do that? Well, that's easy. I put my cursor in here, but if I press tab now, it's just going to move down to the next cell. I don't want to do that. So instead, I go to layout and insert below in the rows and columns heading. I'm going to go down and do likewise with education. and other skills. Okay, at this point, now I can do something about getting rid of my orphan on the next page. Now it's really easy. I simply pull this down. 
I enlarge that one cell. Whoop, pulled the whole cell down. Didn't want to do that. Let's make the cell a little smaller so it goes back up. And lo and behold, everything else is now formatted correctly. Now what it has left me is I've got a little bit of white space here. So the way we fill that in, rather than hitting enter, enter, or what have you, we're going to enlarge. And I realize this is a back and forth process a little bit. The space between sections, just a little bit. You don't have to take up all that space, but leave just a very little bit. Now it's moved that cell back down. We don't want that, so once again, reduce the size of the cell. Now that's better. We've left a couple of blank lines there, so you just don't want a chunk of big, a big chunk of white space. Once again, we're going to go back. We're going to check this under print, and that is what the finished product will look like. What you want is something that's easy to read. I have an objective, I have experience, and if we go to page two, education and other skills. In other words, no orphans. So we're ready to go. Oops, I've noticed one minor thing. And that's where going back and forth really helps. So we're going to go to home. Once again, I'm going to highlight everything in there. And by the way, when I do that, not going to do it now. Okay. I'm just going to hit increase indent and now we should be completely lined up as we go up and down. So it looks professional. It looks clean. And did I notice one other little... Ah! I forgot to put... There we go. Under objective. So let's go correct that. So you can see once we've got the basic formatting in there, how easy it is to literally go back. Oops, there we are. Insert below. I want to check my spacing at the bottom. We take that up. Whoop. Get it down. There we are. Perfect. Now we didn't we can move, if you've noticed, in partial spaces or partial uh, line spaces. We're, we're not confined to that. We can move, kind of micromanage everything, so it becomes very easy to do. One final check before we print. Everything's lining up perfectly. I've got a little space between there. It's neat, it's clean, and this is really what you want. Whoop, come on. There we go. Education, other skills, perfect. This is a clean resume that you can then go back and modify at any time. You're going to change where you live, you're going to do all kinds of things. But notice with all of the going back and forth between bolded, unbolded, small caps, large caps, confining things to a cell also confines that formatting. It won't bleed over and that's one of the other issues that you can run into. So we are done. Um, you have everything. You can go on. You can click the paragraph um, button that's up here under paragraph or formatting button rather and you can go check things over. And that's a good idea. You learn what uh, small indents look like, what paragraph, what Word considers a paragraph, which is the paragraph symbol here, and just go through it. Very easy matter to do, and then uncheck it, and you're good. So I thank you for your attention, and you'll be able to refer to this video at any time.